folks, I'd like to call to order the April 1st, 2020 Select Board meeting. Tonight, we're trying a new format for our Select Board meeting that's going to both model and exhibit proper social distancing. It allows board members and presenters to communicate with each other and for the public to be able to watch and listen to the meeting through our regular channels. We're broadcasting live on RCTV channels, Verizon Channel 33, Xfinity Channel 22, you can also connect to see this meeting from a link at the rctv.org website for Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Thanks to Phil Rushworth at RCTV for working with us to allow for live broadcasts of and an all virtual video conference meeting. This is our first go at this. We appreciate your patience as well as suggestions on how we can improve this in the future. So folks, it's time for us all to take a deep breath again and address our most immediate priorities the safety and security of our neighbors and ourselves, and how to navigate as a town through the, the, excuse me, the COVID-19 pandemic. Our main mission tonight is to share with residents about town operations and response, and how residents can find resources that they may need during the pandemic. The town is open for business, but through different methods of communication. Town Manager Bob will assure, and then I will lead us through a discussion of this. The board will also discuss formally declaring a state of emergency in the town, vote on some board of health matters, vote on some state legislative matters, vote on insurance and discuss topics for our next meetings, the next of which is scheduled for April 14th, 2020. We will allow for public comment submitted by email to selectboard at ci.reading.ma.us for topics that are on the agenda. Our goal will be to clarify about issues or answer questions about any of the agenda items. Other issues will be deferred and staff or the board will respond as quickly as possible after the meeting. All emails received by the full board become part of the public record. Though the agenda called for public comment before we take some important votes, I'm gonna ask the board to allow us to move public comment toward the end of the meeting tonight with the goal that many of the issues we'll be discussing this evening will be covered before that time and then public comment can follow. Okay, here virtually, we have many members of the command team uh, participating and town manager Bob LaSure will introduce the structure and key individuals who may offer some comments. We'll allow them to speak first this evening so that they can return to their duties or well-deserved rest. These leaders and their staffs are keeping us safe and secure in these unsettling times and they deserve our strong praise for their work on our behalf. One quick housekeeping note to the folks that will be speaking. Uh, please unmute yourself when you speak, and then after you speak, please return to mute. With that, I'll turn it over to Bob to discuss the uh, town operations and response. And Bob, um, but you're all set, you're unmuted, please take it away. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, do you wanna show the slides? Yep, give me just one okay. slide, please. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, many members of the community, certainly all the staff and the volunteer boards these are uh, unusual circumstances, and I think the community is generally doing pretty well. We'll have some suggestions later for some areas of improvement, though. Um, we first met in the last week of January to discuss the COVID-19 issue, um, which at that point was entirely in China, um, and we started our prep work. About a month ago, we introduced a more formal stance. <clears throat> We used what's called the Incident Command System, or ICS. That's something that's used by every level of government in the country. We all have, or most of us have, significant training in it. Um, the structure of a given ICS uh, for an incident can vary depending on several factors. This one was clearly a long-term incident and a very large and broad incident. So we use something called Unified Command. Uh, a group of people there in Unified Command develop the incident goals, objectives, strategy, and approve all actions and communication. Um, we have received numbers of uh, requests for approving communications. That seems like the busiest thing we do. We have a liaison officer who is in charge of public correspondence inbound, if you will. We have a public information officer, which provides information to the public on an outbound basis. Uh, very importantly, we have a very large and key planning section, which produces what's called an incident action plan. That's how to accomplish the goals uh, that command hands down. We have an operations section, which carries out the, uh, the incident action plan. It identifies and assigns resources and assists with strategy. 
and then a, a couple of smaller sections, a logistics section that does the ordering and, and helps develop some plans as to what's practical, and a finance section that develops cost estimates, ensures that we have the funds available, uh, does the procurement, and pays the bills. This group is a total of about 25 town, school, and RMLD folks working together, uh, as we've been trained to do for many, many years. As a sample, on the next slide, we have uh, some command goals that were developed in March 16th, just to pick one, one date. There were seven specific goals and then daily issues as they arise. Um, all goals were complete, um, some in a day or two, some took a week, but that just gives you a flavor of what a set of goals would be. Um, this command group is meeting. It was meeting daily for a while. I think we're down about three times a week now um, and we'll meet as needed. Specifically, the staffing of these groups, uh, Greg Burns as the fire chief and the emergency management director, Emmy Dove, the chair of the Board of Health, who has done heroic work as a volunteer especially. Thank you, Emmy. Uh, Dave Clark, our police chief, John Doherty, our superintendent, and myself, uh, town manager. Um, this is a group that's meeting again now several times a week, but not daily. Matt Cornelis is the liaison officer, so he's gathering all the inbound communication. We'll have more on that later. Jane Wellman is the public information officer. She does the outbound work. Jane has been uh, doing a great job designing the website and adapting as things change. Fire Captain Rick Nelson was uh, the operations section and the planning section are both headed up by uh, the fire assistant chief, Paul Jackson. And then the smaller logistics sections and finance and administrative section, uh, Sharon Angstrom is the section chief. So with the chair's permission, I'd like to turn that over now to uh, other members of the command staff for their comments. Yes, please. Bob, do you have a preferred order of operations in terms of who will speak first? I think uh, in the order of the slide, Greg, Emmy, Dave, John. Greg, please unmute yourself and away you go. Um, uh, thank you. So uh, we put together a uh, unified command structure to to look at what the uh, town response should be to this incident, and we we chose uh, people from the different departments that are impacted, um, and then uh, we assigned people to to planning, which is really a, a key aspect of it is developing the plans on how we're going to respond to this incident, and then uh, operations on how we're actually going to carry out those plans and uh, logistics and how we're gonna get supplies and finance and how we're gonna pay for it. And the other thing that's really important about this incident is getting the right communications out to the public. Um, it's, this incident is changing so quickly that it's, um, it's important to get the right message out. The other thing that's important is we were in pretty good shape to begin with because all the town uh, departments um, and the school department had uh, continuity of operations plans. So they knew what their key functions were, how long they could go without providing some of those functions. And then we uh, adapted it for this incident um, by, by looking at those key functions and what functions could be done remotely. So we could keep providing uh, service to the community. So the work that we did in, did in prior years really helped us for this, for this incident. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. We shift uh, over to Emmy, please. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> just start with the good news. Can you please introduce yourself first, Emmy, to everybody? My name is Emmy Dove. I'm the chair of the Board of Health. Um, so, the Board of Health has actually met 18 times since March 10th, uh, and a couple of us have had many additional meetings with town officials on top of that. I'm not going to go over the detailed minutia of every decision or order we've made, but I'll give a general summary. We closed town buildings to public access, as well as allowing certain processes that were typically done on a walk-in basis to move to an electronic or telephone-based system. We have been in communication with the food pantry, the local clergy, and local businesses on best operating procedures. We 
um, have closed town playgrounds and athletic courts, fields and complexes. In advance of the governor's orders, we ordered the closure of personal care service businesses like hair salons or nail salons and began to restrict the use of reusable bags. Just this morning, we voted to temporarily ban door-to-door -door solicitation and canvassing and to declare a state of emergency for the town of Reading. Our health agent, Laura Vlasic, has been guiding the board on relevant issues to consider, which has been a great help. It is the intention of the Board of Health to focus our future efforts on educational outreach. I know there's a plethora of information out there, um, but the hope is that folks will be receptive to hearing from members of our own community. We are all working long hours, some of us as volunteers, to try to protect our residents to the best of our ability. And I will say, it feels very disrespectful for folks to blatantly ignore some of our orders. Um, the closer we get to achieving total compliance of the governor's orders and our Board of Health's orders for a solid three to four weeks, the sooner our small businesses will be able to open again and the sooner will be to returning to a sense of normalcy. Remember that the data you see today actually reflects our actions from one to two weeks ago, perhaps even three weeks ago, depending on testing turnaround. Now for the difficult news. Um, so we've been relying on a public health nurse from Malden to do all outreach to positive cases, including contact tracing. I, I just received a message from her this evening that she's swamped and will be spending the next several days no longer be able to work running cases after that. We do have a new in-house part-time nurse who started last week, but she's currently um, awaiting access or approval before she can get um, training on the state reporting software known as Maven. Um, so this means that we don't have any nurse currently with um, Maven access between tomorrow and the time our new nurse is trained. Um, we being the Board of Health and Health Agent had received an offer from our previous nurse to come back for the pandemic, but we were told there was an HR issue with that. We received an offer from the state to use students for contact tracing, but we're told there was a policy issue and we couldn't take unpaid student interns. Um, I, this area is really currently my greatest concern as contact tracing and monitoring is possibly our most critical function and incredibly time consuming. And we currently have nobody who's qualified to do it for a short period of time anyway. Um, given the scope of this, the future scope of this, I think it's um, critical that we add at least one more nurse full time who is experienced in Maven as soon as humanly possible. That's all I have. Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, Barbara Jean, uh, do you want to, to comment a little bit on what we might be able to do? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me, Mark? Yes. Well, we, as Emmy mentioned, we just received this news about 10 minutes ago, so it's difficult to have an answer. <laughs> um, I don't think, I don't know of any hurdles why our new public health nurse can't be trained or, has, or hasn't been trained We'll certainly look to find that out. She's eminently qualified, so that's not the issue. One of the issues we are seeing uh, kind of organizationally is that the difficulty in hiring any new people now um, because some of the medical tests that we require of new employees just are not available. So there's some, there are some bottlenecks for hiring people um, right now, and we're working, trying to work as best we can with Labor Council on that. But this, you know, I, again, this is news tonight. There's no reason our public health nurse that exists shouldn't be ready as soon as humanly possible. If I could, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, so we did, I did get an update from the new, our new nurse today that all the paperwork's been filed and the state confirmed that they have everything from her. So she will be in the office tomorrow, as will myself and the health agent. I think Laura's on the line. Um, and we'll have a better picture tomorrow on when the training uh, will take place. I don't think it's an involved step. Um, it's just a matter of the state 
um, catching up to the application from the nurse. And once she has a password, um, I, I think she's ready to go. And I'll add that uh, Jean has reached out and Woburn's public health nurse is available, which we'll now need to use. Great, so we'll have some access to Woburn. Great, Vanessa, yes. do you have a, a comment? I did, thanks Rex, Vanessa Alvarado from the board. Um, Emma, you mentioned an HR issue with potentially uh, bringing the former health nurse back. Bob, I know that HR issues are always um, delicate, but given the circumstances, um, can you, is there a reason, um, administrative or otherwise, that we can't bring her back on a temporary basis? I know you mentioned the testing. Um, can that be suspended? Is it required, given that she was a former employee already, and, and recently, if I recall? Um, for tonight, I have no response to that question, Vanessa. So we, I think what we probably should do here is move on, but I guess, can we make the request that this obviously is one of the most important issues we have uh, facing the town now, and it, whatever you folks are able to do to, to get us the resources we need at this point, I think that's very important. Um, if that's all right, can we move on to Dave Clark, please? Chief Clark. Hi, Mark, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so Chief Clark, everyone. First off, um, we've been working very close with Chief Burns with the operations. I'm not going to go into it anymore. I know he's covered it and it's in the packet. Basically, I wanted to assure the town that we're here. We're out on the road. The town is safe. If you need us, we will be there. We've modified how we do things. We, for instance, were asking people to we're taking most reports over the phone. We have officers separated in the station that are taking phone calls and taking phone reports. We have supplemented the patrol force with our school resource officers and our traffic and safety officer to add more cruises, more um, officers out on the road. But I can assure you, if you need us, we will be here. We'll, we're here for you. We're, we're staff. We're good to go. And I just want to show the rest of the town that we're going to continue to um, operate just in a slight different manner. It's different for us. We've been a very community policing oriented department. And for us to kind of keep a distance and stay away from people, just it's not a lack of concern. It's not a lack of understanding, but we're just trying to keep our distance, keep you safe and us safe. Early on, what we did, one of the first things we did was isolate dispatch. Dispatch is obviously crucial for police and fire. We've isolated that early on, and we've asked people to stay out of the police station as much as possible. And we have gone on with uh, virtual roll calls, keeping the officers out, keep the officers separate as much as we can. We're here for you. We will continue to be here for you. Like I said, we've just modified our approach to things. And we're just um, thankful for the public. And I just want to reassure that we are here. And we are getting a lot of text of tips about us trying to force social distancing at the playgrounds, at the parks. It just, I ask the public to work with us, talk to your kids. Um, we need some help in this way. We can't be at, sitting at every park. We can't sit at every playground and forcing this. We are driving by, we're moving people along when we can, but we still have to be the patrol in the street and calls are still out there. We're still getting emergency calls. We're still getting car crashes and we're still having domestic disputes and we're still having theft and some larceny. So we are out there doing the best we can enforcing it, but we're asking the parents to kind of really help out with talking to the kids and explaining to the kids and just the parents helping us enforce. Like we always talk about, it takes a village. We're going to need the village of Reading to help us kind of keep the social distancing. We're doing the best we can, but we still have to respond to emergency calls. And I just like, again, just want to form, we are here. If you call 911, we're going to come. Thanks very much, Chief. Um, next on the list is uh, Superintendent John Doherty. John, are you, can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you, Mark. Um, so like the rest of the team, uh, we've been part of the incident command system. Um, and the advantage to that, obviously, is that we're able to share communication and resources um, from the school side, which, uh, and, and back and forth, which I think has been extremely helpful during this entire crisis. Uh, very similar to uh, the municipal, uh, we also have a con continuity of operations that we have set up. Essentially, we are building right now a virtual school uh, for our 4,300 students, um, and that has been happening over the last three weeks. We are gonna go into a lot of detail uh, at our school committee meeting on Monday night, uh, which we will be sending some information out tomorrow. But essentially we have divided up um, several different areas among our five uh, central office administrators and several directors. 
So that includes our Chief Financial Officer, Gail Dowd, Assistant Superintendent, Chris Kelly, uh, Director of Student Services, Jen Stice, uh, Human Resources Administrator, Jen Allard, and then obviously each building principal has been overseeing uh, working with their, their staff. One of the uh, critical areas right now that we are trying to do is trying to make sure that our students have uh, access to meals and technology. Um, and that we've been working very closely with the town with that, but uh, Gail Dowd has been spearheading that for the schools. So I'm gonna give her an opportunity to, to give a little bit of an update on that. Gail, please. Great, thank you. Um, as John just mentioned, one of our first priorities has been connecting with all of the families and it's a multi-phased approach. We're doing touch points, but we're also checking in on them to see if there's anything that they need. We're looking at sort of the social, emotional, as well as other needs. So to date, we are currently preparing grab and go lunches for about 25 students. Um, our food services director has been amazing. She is actually preparing weekly packets. And for the most part, she is distributing them to the homes. We are, the list has been growing each day. I have to give a shout out to Kerry, who I think is also on the call. We've been connecting with her daily as well to make sure any needs we're hearing from the school community, we're passing it along to the town. So um, Chief Burns and um, his team have been phenomenal as well to make sure that all of the avenues are open. We also have been working very closely to deploy technology now that we're going to remote learning, teaching, say that wrong, um, <laughs> into phase two of this. We've deployed about 50 laptops to date. We're also deploying iPads as well as other assistive technology to our students as well. So it's been a very busy couple of weeks. Thanks, Gail. John, do you have a, a little bit more as well? No, that's it. We will be given a, a much more in-depth report on Monday night. Great. At the school committee meeting? Yes. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, Bob, do we want to bring it back to you? There are others that you would like to have speak now? Oh, you have to unmute yourself first. There we go. Uh, I'm going to describe now as quickly as I can um, what the town operations are and are not. Um, it'll take a few minutes. We have a lot to get through. Um, in terms of town hall, uh, the vast majority of the work is continuing. If I were to guess, it's about 85%, but the public interaction has very much changed. We have a significant amount of staff that work remotely. Some work maybe three days a week remotely and one day in town hall, uh, it, it varies. Uh, the town manager office, we have uh, three folks in it and usually there's one of us here, but not usually more than one. Uh, HR, most of the staff is working remotely. As I mentioned, the hiring process has a bit of a bottleneck right now. Um, technology has been phenomenal. They've been working 24 hours a day to suddenly change all the way all of our services were offered. Operations, which is really important right now, it's procurement and communications have also been doing great work. The town clerk's office is staffed with one person uh, four days a week as a minimum. So they're handling business just as they normally would, although in, again, in a different format. Uh, permits and inspections are a little bit different. Um, if I might uh, answer one of the questions that came in just a few minutes ago about night meetings guidance. Um, our staff, Julie Mercier and others, are working with town council on protocols for land use boards. Uh, the final draft to be released really depends on legislation that we do expect to be completed and signed this week. Um, so we'll have much more guidance for, for a lot of your volunteer boards as soon as that legislation comes out. Um, for permits, pretty much all of our services are still offered. It's just telephone and electronic. Um, economic development, Erin uh, is on the call. She may speak later. She's been very, very busy, and she's shif shifted to a support of local businesses, which is obviously really important. Uh, elder human services and health have certainly been very uh, integral into this. Uh, the Pleasant Street Center is closed, but you'll hear from them later. Um, they've been working very hard and collaboratively with a number of agencies in town. And again, the health uh, division is, is quite busy. Uh, payroll upstairs and, and the bills still need to be paid are working remotely, but they have to come in about once a week. 
On the next slide, uh, public safety, as you just heard from both chiefs, they're fully staffed. The remote uh, uh, support staff, rather, is working remotely. Um, all three agencies are exceptionally busy. They've done their best to discontinue public access. Thanks to the Board of Health for some of that. Compost uh, is now open. It's free. There's no compost stickers required. Um, but I want to emphasize uh, something that Dave said. Uh, the police department in Reading is not staffed to monitor the parks in the town forest. Um, they have actually been urged by the command team to minimize personal contact with the public for the safety of all involved. Um, we do have positive uh, cases in the department, so we want to be really careful. Um, we, they, are, they have all engaged in very careful work patterns so that if one of them does test positive, to backtrace their exposure is now very simple. It's a simple enough example is, for instance, certain police officers now share one car where police officers used to jump into the nearest car available to start a shift, and now it's all very carefully done. For public works on the next slide, the staff is on a rotational basis. There's a limited amount of remote work that can be done. Uh, there's one employee maximum, uh, back one uh, slide, Mark, thank you. Sorry. Um, one employee maximum per, per truck, uh, typically there had been two and even three. Uh, the only change in rubbish and recycling is that the private textile uh, company stopped its pickup. So those are the pink bags that we just started. Um, Engineering staff is coming in every other day. As, as you can see, the governor has allowed construction projects to continue. So our DPW engineers in the, in the permitting area upstairs are very busy. Um, even though the parks are closed, uh, the parks and forestry work is mostly continuing. Highway and equipment is also have stopped doing some local projects, especially sidewalk. Uh, the maintenance is very busy servicing vehicles. Uh, clearly, all the water and sewer work uh, is continuing as it has. The DPW garage is closed to the public, so there are no drop-offs. Um, we'll announce to the public when that'll change, but as of right now, it will not be before May 4th uh, per the governor's orders. We have no uh, recycled bin or sticker distribution or water conservation devices available, and again, that'll also be at least a May 4th date. Uh, next slide. Thanks, Mark. Public library, there's only a couple of employees in the building at a time. Uh, all circulation and materials are suspended. They're continuing their virtual services and adding on to them. The trustees are reviewing a library uh, work plan, and Amy and John are here tonight if there's any questions. Facilities department is fully staffed. There's some rotation going on with school custodians where buildings are closed. Uh, but as you can imagine, there's extensive cleaning efforts. We have a contractor as well as our staff uh, pretty much working on the 24-hour buildings most significantly. Um, all staff is working um, and observing social distancing. Um, at this point, if um, Colleen like to add anything for RMLD. Hi, good evening. Um, so I am on the incident team in the planning group, and that's been uh, excellent in helping the town. The RMLD team is still maintaining full electric and business continuity at this time to provide safe and reliable service to the town of Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield Center. The RMLD understands that electricity is an essential staple of life and is, during these unprecedented times, a, a life force to hos hospitals and other first responder emergency facilities, education, work capabilities at home, fresh food, water, and helping to find a cure. As this virus unfolds, the RMLD will, with its operational staff complemented by outside contractors as backup resources, work to ensure that any outages issues are responded to with the customer service excellence that you are accustomed to. The RMLD is taking every precaution to ensure the safety of its workers, the public, and the RMLD assets. While our business office remains closed, our control room is available 24-7 to accept your calls, as always, if you have any electric-related issues. Our operations crews and system engineering have been split into Team A and Team B with remote physical separation within the service territory to ensure coverage redundancy. Our customer service and business staff is remote work from home with technology to continue all the services. The RMLD recognizes the power of the community and together we will endure and ensure that your essential supply of electric service is safe and reliable. For the customers who are experiencing financial hardship due to the COVID, 
we realize that these customers have been financially impacted by the ongoing public health crisis. While the RMLD does not have the authority under the filed rate doctrine to discount charges, we can support our customers with financial hardships with payment plans. Um, I'm, I've put all of this up on the website tonight. Um, so if you are having difficulty paying some or all of your RMLD bill, please contact cu customer service uh, 781-942-6598. Again, I have put that up on the website and discuss a payment arrangement as soon as possible. Electric bills will continue to be processed during this period, so it's important to continue to make payments if you are able to avoid a large account balance in the future. Mm -hmm. Residential monthly bills are likely to be higher than normal as increased remote work and education is being done at home, and we just want customers to be mindful of that. Um, as always, the safety of our employees and the public is RMLD's top priority. Please be assured that the RMLD is committed to continue to provide safe and reliable service to our customers through this unprecedented time and beyond. If you want to go on the website, please refer to remote bill payments. We have pay online, pay by phone, uh, drop boxes that are located at um, 230 Ash Street here, uh, Reading Town Hall at 16 Lowell Street, New England Beverage at 158 Main Street in North Reading, Aluchi's Supermarket at 2. 23 Lowell Street in Wilmington, or as always by mail. Um, the contact information also on the website for outages and emergencies um, is 781-942-6598. Again, it's on the website and they're there 24-7. Uh, there's also a number listed for general inquiries. Um, so please visit our website and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, email or phone call. And I wish everyone Thank you. Thanks, Colleen. Bob, do you want to, uh, are there others that you'd want to have speaker or should I move on to the next slide? Oh, you're muted still. Sorry, let's, I got you. I think the next slide. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Let me just so if anyone's following the agenda, we're now moving on to resources to get information and help under an early section. Um, this is a slide that we'll certainly make available. It, it's, it's on the website, but we'll make it a little clearer. Um, looking at the website itself, uh, www.readingma.gov, as Mark had a nice uh, promo for this uh, meeting, the red banner at the top, which you can see on the bottom page here, has quite a bit of information. Um, there's a lot of resources listed on that, uh, on that banner. Specifically, uh, two ways that folks can get in touch with us specifically for this incident. If you need help with human and elder service concerns, that will be Kevin Bowmiller and, and Kerry Valley. There's an email address for this called COVID19COVID-19help at ci.reading.ma.us. All of our emails end with that. Um, if you are willing to help, and I know there's a lot of organizations in town that have uh, organized themselves, which we appreciate. That's COVID-19 volunteer at ci.redding.ma.us. Uh, Matt and Jane uh, will deal with that, the inbound and outbound communications folks. If there are general questions, uh, send them to Matt and myself at COVID-19 at ci.redding.ma.us. Um, some of these addresses are, are, have been up for a few days. We publicized them on the uh, website. I expect more publicity will get for better usage, but there's only been two or three questions so far. Um, importantly, for those folks that uh, don't have uh, technology or don't prefer to use technology, we do offer telephone service and we've tested it out. It works fine. 781-942-6680 is a new general number uh, for this specific incident. Uh, please leave your name and phone number when you call. There are a menu of options that you can choose from, but if you don't choose from them, please at least leave your name and number. If you hit number one, that's for non-urgent help. That would be similar to uh, asking a general question above. Um, number two, if you're willing to volunteer, again, that would be similar to the email above. And if you have a general um, non-urgent question that's similar to an email address above. Um, number four, we've got a few of these so far to subscribe to our code red alert system. Um, we sent a message out yesterday. It's our first one. It's, it's unclear how often we'll do this. 
Um, we think if people just keep an eye on the red banner on the website or use that telephone um, phone number, they'll be able to keep up, but we'll certainly use um, communications at, our, at our, tool, our, our tools at our hands. And again, just, just as a reminder for emergencies, please call 911, but please don't call 911 for general questions. Uh, dispatchers are very busy, police and fire are very busy. Um, this is not the time to be asking uh, where, you know, what businesses are open, who's serving takeout, and that's the kind of calls that dispatch is getting even on 911 right now. So we'd ask for the community's help in just using common sense at this point. We'll make sure to uh, circulate this. We're going to send a mailing to some of our uh, uh, elder human services clients that we don't think use technology much to make sure. And I'll also add before stepping aside for speakers that um, our elder human services uh, staff have called many, many people in town. I know I got a phone message at home since I'm the right age, apparently. But they personally reached out to uh, a demographic of, I believe, over 60, which I really appreciated. My wife didn't appreciate quite as much, but I appreciated it. Um, we are here to help. Um, we can't help you unless you let us know. We are very appreciative of the fact that a lot of residents and neighbors are helping each other, and there's no reason for us to stand in the way of that. But if there's any shortfall in the, and need, some kind of a need of a safety net, um, the town will match you with help. So again, please use all these resources. Um, and I think I, I think the most helpful place to start, Mark, is if uh, Kevin and Carrie could speak uh, from a human elder services perspective. Please, that would be great. Carrie or, or Kevin, you'd like to speak? Okay, I think I'm unmuted. <clears throat> you are. First off, community services has not had any downtime since this started. Uh, I'll just go through the, brief, the, the divisions very briefly. Uh, number of phone calls from veterans and spouses as to whether or not the Chapter 115 checks would be going out. Uh, now, again, I want to thank you, the Finance Department. Those checks will be going out on time, and those are to the people that are in need. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, recreation, unfortunately, has been busy processing a lot of refunds. Uh, to, to programs that have been canceled. Uh, they've also been helping out with the phone calls that Bob has mentioned, and I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, they're also planning for the future when this, uh, when this crisis passes and, and we're ready to, uh, to get recreation going again. Uh, as far as the Pleasant Street Center, it is closed. Uh, Meals on Wheels is something that's provided by Mystic Valley Elder Ser Services. That is continuing. And they are providing this, um, Deb and Larry, and they provide over 450 meals per week uh, to local residents. And that uh, we've had a small uptick. Kerry Valley has added a few people to that list, and I anticipate having to add more. But uh, again, they've been doing a great job with that, and uh, thank you to them. Uh, the Pleasant Street staff, as soon as we, we closed the center, we started making what we thought were just wellness calls, just to check in on people to say, hello, how are you doing? Uh, they've, they've turned into more than just a hello, uh, how are you? They've, tur they've turned into chat sessions. Uh, people are very lonely and they are very, very happy to, to have a welcome voice. Um, and it, it's been great to hear that friends, families, neighbors have really been stepping up, uh, checking on people. Uh, there are other organizations. I was speaking with someone today, the Knights of Columbus, uh, had given them a call earlier to check on them. So right now, that everybody, for the most part, is doing well. Uh, in the few instances that, that people aren't, we've been able to, to work things out and get them the, the assistance that they need. Uh, so thank you to all the Pleasant Street staff for doing that, and to, again, to the recreation staff who was pitched in. Uh, we've done well over 1,000 communications to this point uh, between making phone calls and, and answering messages that have, people have left on our on our voicemails. And I also want to thank Gail Dowd. She's done a great job communicating with Kerry Valley uh, on needs of, of families in the town through the school system. So that, that's been great. And Kelly's been, Kerry's been able to add uh, numerous families to the food pantry. Uh, so when they hopefully open up on Friday, uh, they, they'll be able to get assistance. Um, that's, that's, that's about it. I'm, I'm proud of everybody and all the work they've been doing. And uh, again, we're here to figure things out as we go, just like everybody else. 
Thanks, Kevin. And, and uh, some of you will recognize Kevin as having been in charge of uh, Veterans Affairs in town and has taken on this new role. Um, and obviously, you're, you're, uh, you're stepping in with uh, feet, hands, and everything else. So much appreciated, Kevin. Well, thanks, Mark. Carrie, are there anything else you'd like to add as well? No, we just, our staff has been working tirelessly to make sure everybody in the community is safe and doing well. Um, it's been a long road, but we're doing a great job. And I think we have a great team and it, teamwork is really the key here. And um, we have great communicators and I think it's going as well as it can. Uncharted waters and we're doing a good job. Thank you for all your efforts. Thanks, sure. Awesome. Um, to go back for a second, I don't know if Amy or John, uh, do you want to speak for a moment on, on library activities? No, not John Darty, sorry, John uh, Brzezinski. Um, hi, it's Amy. Um, we are doing basically a lot of similar things to recreation and the Pleasant Street Center, which is just really shifting. Um, what can we do online? Um, we're continuing to, you know, pay bills and receive materials, but we're also doing a lot with our virtual, we're adding a lot with our collections, um, trying to get that publicized and out. We're doing a lot of cross promotion with um, the town and the schools and trying to make sure that any, everything we get from them gets pumped out to our community as well, our parts of the community. But um, other than that, a lot of it is just, um, if, you know, a little backup and a little help. Um, we, um, it's been great. The town's reached out whenever they needed few extra staff here and there and we're trying to just try and help out where we can. Thanks very much, Amy. Um, Joe, uh, would you like to say a few words, Joe Huggins? Just need to unmute yourself first. The, um, in the office here, there's no more than two of us here every day in facilities and we're like Bob said, we're working on a rotating schedule. The guys are um, traveling separately in the trucks. We're still performing a lot of the work uh, in the um, in the town and school buildings. It's mandated that we have to do, for instance, like elevator inspections and sprinkler and fire alarm and things of that nature. So we're here. We're here every day. We're operating as we normally would with, um, you know, taking care to make sure that we're not in contact with other people as little as possible. Um we're providing additional cleanings to the public safety buildings uh, above and beyond what we normally do, which is once a week, we're going through the um, Main Street Fire Station, West Side Fire Station, including all their vehicles. We're doing that on a Sunday. And then on Mondays, we're moving into the um, police station and we're doing the entire building. Uh, they're using uh, the latest technology you've probably seen on TV. It's a misting machine and they go through and they uh, sort of fog an area and then they go through and they uh, uh, disinfect and sanitize all the areas of all those uh, those three public safety buildings I just mentioned um, and doing the cruisers also. We just extended that um, into the public works um, garage, including their fleet of the frontline vehicles, I'll call them, that are used every day. Um, and we're also providing um, cleaning services during the day uh, on the town side, because, um, you know, obviously there are there are four buildings that are open that have limited staff, but especially the public safety buildings in DPW. Uh, we're making sure that we're ha we have an active presence in the buildings to make sure that, um, you know, all the touch points are hit, um, disinfected with the, um, the chemical that we're using uh, that fights this uh, virus and kills it. And... Um, so we're here. We're willing to help out however we can. We're working really closely with the school department. Um, the elementary schools were all completely cleaned. Um, we're in the middle schools tomorrow, starting the top to bottom cleaning of that. The high school, I believe, by tomorrow will be completely done also. Um, and we're just monitoring closely who's coming in and out. If we do go into a building, we're cleaning behind us and going back out the door. So... We're doing targeted repair work. We're not looking to, we're not doing any major projects right now. Again, it's just keeping up with the work orders that come in uh, and we're doing building checks also to make sure that the, the facilities are protected. So um, if anybody needs us, they know how to get a hold of us. We're here for you if you need anything. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Jane, in terms of uh, public works, anything that you wanted to add? 
Uh, no, we just, uh, as Bob mentioned, we started splitting our shifts last Monday, the 23rd. So only half of the guys in, in at one time. Um, and they, instead of starting their day off, let's say in the you know central area, we've asked them to split up into the various garage bays. So there's only, you know, three or four people at the very most starting out um, to the various um, destinations in town. We've, st we've stopped doing... Um, going into houses as much as possible because we used to do a lot of meter change outs, that type of stuff. All of that is on hold. We're only doing emergencies that, um, but, you know, regular pothole, that type of stuff is continuing. So. Great. Thanks, Jane. Uh, Jane Wellman uh, and Matt, would you folks like to add something here? Jane, do you want to go first? Sure. Thank you. Um, so I've been working on commu outbound communications and working uh, liaising with the command team to uh, push out um, updated numbers um, to uh, give uh, the board of health orders that have been approved um, and all kinds of, so we, the first web page that was created was January 23rd on the uh, board of uh, the public health website. And so we optimized that and, and took kind of a narrative approach. So every new order that was posted um, came up in order. Then we add a number of lists of resources at the bottom for the state, um, federal CDC guidelines and uh, local resources. Um, this became an untenable solution and it was not very um, user friendly. So last week we re redesigned the website and added that red bar that's considered an urgent alert. And I would encourage people to subscribe on the website to the urgent alerts. So anytime that that page is updated, it gets pumped out to all the subscribers. And so they're alerted for any changes. Um, it has number of su subsidiary pages that are dedicated. For instance, I've been working with Aaron Schaefer um, uh, almost daily to update and, and um, uh, add resources for our local businesses. We have um, information there for our residents on um, local residents uh, from what the school department is putting out, what the Board of Health has updated, um, local changes so that we have an update. Yeah, so if you look at that, that's great. Click the read more, yep. There you go. So at the top, you can see that it has updated information, how to sign up for community alerts, um, to get those emails, follow us on social media. I take care of that as well. Um, we have our updated number of cases, and then there's a link to the COVID-19 Massachusetts dashboard that people can look at um, that uh, can be helpful. If you, um, so it gives you all of the latest update from the state. Um, if you uh, continue down on that, there's an in brief section. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I shrunk Massachusetts. <laughs> Uh, uh, doesn't want to scroll for me, Jane. Sorry. I'm sorry. So anyway, on that same urgent alert page, um, there's an in brief section that has recent changes. So if the governor makes a change, I'll update it there. Um, to, and for example, he changed the listing of essential businesses. So there's a link there that's really quick. People can find um, recent changes because it's such a fluid situation. And because from nine o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night, things change. Um, we try to keep it updated there. And then there's um, the, the longer uh, subsidiary pages that folks can click over to. Um, and we added for residents yesterday a number of resources for mental health um, that was put together by uh, the Reading Coalition, by the school department. And so we're trying to get those um, resources out to people as well. And then today we um, updated the phone uh, communication, those the links that um, Bob talked about earlier, so people can call in, uh, people can email us with uh, questions, they can email us with um, information they want us to update the page with, it's really helpful, we need to know what people are looking for, um, and so we're trying to anticipate, we're looking at what other towns are doing, and uh, trying to include those items uh, as well, so this sort of a one-stop shopping for our residents can come here and get a lot of information. Um, there are there's a link here to scams that are happening. The district attorney's office has that. Um, the text messages from the state uh, is great. And then if you scroll down just a little bit further, these are the federal, state, the local resources, and then um, resources for our businesses and residents. And then at the bottom, it's if they have a question. Yeah, so here's some information for our businesses. Exactly. 
And um, we have a, a link there. So folks can call uh, 211 at the state level. It's one place where people can get um, information. Yeah, so here's the residents page and this has a lot of mental health pieces. Yeah, so, and there's a webinar for teens, for parents of teens tomorrow, actually. Um, so we wanna put that link up there. And um, there's just a lot of, there's a lot here for folks. Um, because it's a really tough time right now. Um, and then, uh, so if people can email us, uh, Matt and I will will go through suggestions and um, take those and, and continue to update that website. I spend pretty much every day working on, on items for that website, so. Thanks, Jane. Matt, would you like to chime in? Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. I think I think Bob um, covered it well in terms of what we're doing in terms of incoming information from residents. Um, I answer a lot of phone calls. I answer a lot of email. The new em email addresses and phone lines have only been up for um, a couple days, but I was still getting calls on my line, on town manager's line, um, city clerk. Uh, so it's been it's been fairly busy with those type of calls and inquiries. Also, social media, people reach out to us on our Facebook page, and we, we generally, in, in normal times, don't like to, you know, engage too much on the social media, but if there's a question that came in on social media, I've been handling those as well uh, for this situation. So, so we're, we're doing the best we can. I'm getting a lot of information to Jane, you know, three, four times a day and getting those websites updated uh, on a regular basis so people could have the most accurate information out there. Great, thanks, Matt. Um, All right, thank you. select board members, do you have any questions or comments while we have the the whole group assembled here? You do, please. Hey, Marv, I have a question. This is Karen Herrick. Hey, Karen. Um, thank you very much for setting this up, and and I had a number of questions, and a number of them were answered. So I appreciate everybody, and that you're all working together. Um, during this very difficult time. Um, I, hate to, I hate to ask this, but it is wonderful that we have so many services that are still ongoing from the town. And I'm wondering um, what the options are for, for staff to be tested. Um, how is this being handled? Who would like to uh, respond if they can to that? I can respond partly. Um, the command staff has, you know, very in detailed discussions about this. We're following state and federal protocols. Um, there is no need to test staff across the board. Uh, our public safety is probably the most physically at risk, and they are keenly aware of symptoms to look for and keenly aware of when there's reports in the community of symptoms. Um, that does leave a little bit of opening for someone in the community they're dealing with that, that might have uh, the virus and is a asymptomatic. So we're just doing the best we can. Um, you know, some businesses, I think some delivery businesses have now gone to testing people every day when they show up to work. We could do that. We're not there yet. The, until the tests had a better turnaround, there was no sense in that. Um, now there's tests available uh, that possibly have a much quicker turnaround, so that could be possible. So far, we haven't seen it to, to be necessary. And aside from our public safety staff, um, generally all the rest of our staff are socially distancing um, very well, uh, at least in terms of their work responsibilities. So I don't think there's any, uh, you know, any call for anything above and beyond in a testing sense. All employees know if they have any symptoms to get in touch with their physician. We have ordered a couple people not to come to work that have wanted to come to work. So we are being very careful and very prudent as far as that goes. And the one thing that this incident has taught all of us is that something that happened yesterday feels like three months ago. So we're trying to be very fluid, very nimble, uh, because time is moving very, very fast on this. So everything I just told you in three days could be different. And we are recognizing that. Thanks, Bob. Other questions from the board? Uh, Bob, I have a oh, sorry. Go ahead, oh, thank you. Um, we've had a few emails come in from the public. I know that we have public comment technically later, but the staff might be well equipped to handle some of these. Great idea. Um, so I just wanted to flag them. Please. Uh, 
Um, there were some questions about the nurse. Um, Bob, I don't know if you want to take a look at those and see what you can and can't answer. I won't ask them all there. I'll sort of give you a minute to catch up. Um, and another one came in. Um, there's been a request to see if we can remove the basketball hoops from uh, basketball courts to discourage playing. Um, and that's the main board one. Uh, and there's also a question about the number of cases as of today. I mean, do you want to grab that one for a second? Sure. Uh, number of cases as of today is 31. And uh, as far as I, 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 other people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the intention was to try and zip tie the basketball hoops. Uh, yes. <laughs> as opposed to taking them down, you mean? Yeah. Yes, that uh, happened today. Perfect. That happened today. Oh, great. Thank you, Jane. And if I could add, unfortunately, we've already had comments about taking those steps and wishing that they would be undone so they could play basketball. Well, that that's not that's not okay, <laughs> right? Um, Carlo, I think you had some comments. I just had a question for either Jane or Emmy on the guidelines. Are we following the state's essential non-essential guidelines to the T? Or are we uh, flexible on that stuff? Um, do you mean in terms of businesses? Sorry, businesses. Sorry, yes. Uh, we should be, yes. Okay, so we're not doing by the state. Okay. Other questions or comments from the board? Any, any, uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to thank uh, all of the staff and Emmy for all of your yeoman's work in in rising to the occasion of this of this crisis. Um, and you know, I I know that there were employees in the in the police department who test positive, and last I'd heard, um, they were recovering well. And I hope that continues to be the case. Um, and my uh, heart goes out to all members of the community who have been impacted by this. And uh, although this is a very, this um, social distancing and the situation can leave us feeling very isolated. Um, I hope that tonight's meeting will, will leave you feeling somewhat encouraged that, that you are not alone, that we are all in this together, if separately. Um, and, and if you are in need of assistance, please do reach out. Um, to, to any of us and to the, the names and numbers and email addresses uh, that have been, have been provided this evening. Thanks, Ann. Any other board comments? Mark, could I make a yes. comment, please? Hi, John. Yes, please. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I, I noticed that uh, in one of the- Can I interrupt just for a sec, John? Can I ask you to introduce yourself? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, John Stempeck, I'm, I'm one of the RMLD commissioners. Uh, and Colleen, uh, thank you very much. I think she covered that RMLD uh, in terms of what we're doing extremely well. Uh, but I did have a question about whether the town can be in any way more proactive in terms of letting our small businesses know what's available, specifically through the SBA. I, I know there was a line item in one of the charts that I had seen, um, but um, excuse me for a second, I got to get rid of this. Uh, but the question is, uh, there are multiple programs, at least three, both sponsored by the federal government and some by the state, uh, that I don't know if everyone in our small business community or medium business community knows about and whether we could somehow provide a communication to them to help them out in these times. Aaron, would you like to handle that one? Whoop, are you there, Aaron? I'm not sure. Is Erin still with us here? I'm here. Hi there. Hi. So, um, yes, I've been writing. A sorry, daily can I research. introduce yourself, Erin, please? I'm sorry. Sure. sure. I'm Erin Schaefer. I'm the Economic Development Director with the town. Um, I'd like to refer everyone to the Economic Development page on the town's website, as well as um, 
James, the red bar at the top of the website um, also has this information. So I've been writing a daily letter um, of for business support and resources, which is, you know, as you know, things are very fluid. So um, that letter is updated. There are a number of resources that are available and that letter and website has all that information there available. Um, it was last updated yesterday afternoon. Um, I was on a call earlier today um, and have some updated information that I'll be publishing tomorrow. Sorry, Aaron, I tried to grab that link that you sent me and I'm, I'm not able to bring it over. I apologize. Sure, that's okay. So I'll just, um, again, it's on the Town of Reading's web page under the Economic Development page. That button can be accessed from the homepage Give of the one. Town of Reading website. And I will, Mark, do you need me to resend this link? Um, so I've no. got, can I take catch it from here? Yep, catch it from there. So on the left-hand side, there's an economic development button. Now let me try in case I didn't think I was serious. I'm trying it again. There we go. <laughs> right up top, updated COVID-19 business support. And that letter is updated almost daily. And it has all the links and information. It's about federal, state, and local resources. That includes information about all the SBA uh, programs. It talks about mass hire. It talks about, un it has unemployment links, has all sorts of information um, there. So um, I would refer all businesses to that page. And I've made over 60 calls trying to get the word out as much as possible. So if there are specific businesses who need to speak to me, um, please email me or call me um, on my office line. I am getting my phone um, forwarded to my personal cell phone um, so I can take calls and I'm happy to help anyone uh, connect with any resources. Thanks, Erin. Thank we, we just uh, were joined by uh, Pastor Jamie Michaels, um, who uh, I think can speak for a moment about food pantry. Uh, Jamie, are you able to, to join here for a minute? Are you able to, to unmute yourself and speak? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hi there. Thanks, thanks so much, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, so um, I want to just start by um, anybody who doesn't know, I just want to tell you a couple of things about the food pantry. So prior to the COVID-19 situation, um, the food pantry served 127 clients, just for uh, families, I'm sorry, families. Um, just for reference, when I came to live in this community four years ago, we served 100 clients. So that's been an increase of 30% roughly in four years. Um, since the crisis, we've had um, roughly another, um, it's, it's hard to tell, maybe 10 to 20 families um, to come onto the food pantries roster or at least our radar um, who have contacted the food pantry to, to ask for additional support. So those numbers are increasing and we're going to see that go up as um, people are really feeling the effects of losing their jobs and losing their hours, losing their wages. Um, to uh, Typically to come to the food pantry, um, you have to be a Reading resident and you have to meet um, economic qualifications. So um, we will serve people once and then refer them to Cary Valley who does an intake and um, application application process with them to make sure they meet our guidelines. Um, right now, we're being a little bit looser about that um, because we know that people are in need right now and we don't have time to process paperwork for folks. So um, we're uh, inviting people to just come to the food pantry and we'll serve you and then we'll work out the details sort of later when we're out of crisis mode. Um, many of you probably heard the food pantry closed for two weeks. Um, we did that uh, on the advice of other food pantries and sort of in following best practices because we didn't know how else to keep the, um, the clientele of the food pantry safe. We wanted to encourage people to distance if they could, and we thought that maybe by closing early um, that we might be able to sort of stem the tide of um, of. Uh, people coming in contact with each other, we discovered pretty quickly that we are going to have to uh, come up with some different um, way to serve people because we are going to be quarantined for a lot longer than we originally thought. 
So um, we've under the, um, the the guidance and the example of um, the governor's office and many other um, food pantries and the Greater Boston Food Bank, um, we're opening up again this Friday. Um, the way that food pantry typically works is the the list of families is split up. Um, a through J last names, and then the the other end of the alphabet, L through Z last names, K through Z. J, Thank K, you. There we go. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I don't know my alphabet. Um, and so, uh, and those um, folks come on different weeks, so they'll come on the first and third, or the second and fourth week, depending on where their last name falls. So, uh, the food pantry opens up again this. Friday for A through J names. And again, this coming Monday for A through J names. We're then closed for Good Friday. And then we'll be back again the following Monday, the Monday after Easter. So that's April 13th for K through Z names. So again, just real quick, this Friday and this coming Monday for A through J names. We're closed Good Friday. And then back again after Easter for K through Z names. Now, I know that some folks who don't fit in those particular categories will be um, in need of food now. And if you're in, in need in any way, food or otherwise, um, you can call me. Um, my number is 978-276-9478. And that's a Google Voice number that will come directly to me and I can connect you to the food pantry services um, or help you to find the, the other resources that you need. I um, want you to know that we're keeping the safety of our clients and volunteers um, first in mind. So um, we're going to serve people at their cars. They're not going to come into the church building to be served. Um, we have a police uh, detail who's going to come in and um, run traffic it's old South United Methodist Church right downtown, the church with the steeple, the, the bell tower right in the middle of town. Um, we want folks to come in on the Salem Street side. So come in as though you're going into the cemetery and come around the building and then they'll exit out on Main Street. And so hopefully we'll have um, some folks directing traffic and helping, helping people in and out. And then inside the building, our volunteers are going to remain six feet apart from each other and... Um, sanitize every time they come in or out to serve a client. Um, a lot of you have been asking how you can support the work of the food pantry, and I really appreciate that. You've been fantastic. I want to thank all of you um, for your efforts around Limpy the Town Turkey, and all of you who have called and um, asked how you can help during this time. Um, the best thing that we can say right now is financial contributions. You can send checks uh, to 6 Salem Street. You can label them Reading Food Pantry um, and send them to 6 Salem Street. We'll, we're checking the mail there. Um, or you can uh, get gift cards. We love gift cards in the amount of $25 because it, um, typically we give out $15 gift cards and the 25s help us um, to help, help our families just a little bit more. We know there are lots of things that they can't get on food stamps, things like paper goods, um, personal hygiene items, and we'd love to be able to just help people out a little bit more during that this time. So um, you can uh, make uh, checks or um, you can on our face Facebook page, the Food Pantry Facebook page, you can find a link to a PayPal that goes right to us um, or donate gift cards and you can send them right to the church. They'll get where they need to go. Um, we have lots of volunteers right now. The Rotary Club has really graciously stepped in and filled in some of the, the spots for some of our older volunteers who are feeling safer staying home. Um, so we don't have a need for volunteers uh, in person right now, although I'll let you know if that changes um, and appreciate your support. Anybody else have any other questions? Thank you very much, Jamie. Very, very helpful. Really appreciate your, your stepping in to, uh, to speak about the food pantry. I, I appreciate your support of our people and just encourage you to remember that even after this crisis, um, the effects, especially for those who are most vulnerable in our town, are going to be felt for a long time. And so encourage you to just keep them in mind, even when lots of us will go back to work and our routines will become more normalized. And remember, there are lots of folks in our community who are going to be struggling for a long time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Bob, uh, from your side, anything else, please? on this topic. <laughs> um, Mark, if you don't mind. 
Sure. Um, just, just to advise the community, um, we've received at last count uh, just over $4,000 worth of donations, primarily uh, to the police station in the form of gift cards. Our human elder services have given those out on a limited basis and whatever is left over as soon as the food pantry is open on Friday will be given to the food pantry. So certainly a big thanks to those in the community that have thought of their neighbors in need. We really do appreciate that. Thank you. Bob, could you also just highlight the um, opportunity to get gift cards to the lockbox at the police station? Um, there are uh, two locations that I'm aware of. One is behind the superintendent's office in the high school. One is at the police station. Uh, they're secure locations, um, small uh, boxes that if someone wants to drop a gift card in, they can. Um, also, I'd encourage folks to deal, uh, you know, with the food pantry as well, but we'll, we'll certainly help out if those locations are helpful. And the drop box at, the, at Old South Church is um, uh, our, our mailbox, the best mailbox for us is uh, the, the door with the rainbow flag that faces Salem Street. There's a mail slot right in that door that goes okay. to a locked mailbox that only we have keys to. So you're, you can feel free to make donations there. Great. Great. Vanessa, you had a couple more questions. I did. Um, a couple um, just conversation I had with someone um, regarding communicate, and, and I know your memo, Bob, went into a lot of detail on, in the packet, so thank you. People should check, definitely check that out. But as far as communication goes to staff, so uh, it was mentioned earlier, we have had um, staff members um, who have been confirmed positive have what efforts are made to communicate with all the staff within the um, ta ex extensive town staff to let them know if they've been potentially um, in contact with those individuals? Um, through command, so that information has been very well dispersed. Fortunately, we're not seeing a lot of need for that right now, and we're hoping for the best that that continues. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and Joe, you had mentioned that there's been deep cleanings of town buildings. Does that include the DPW and, the, and all the trucks? Yeah, we've actually, um, we got into the rotation with the police and fire stations two weeks ago. And so as of Monday, they've been done twice. And... Um, Prior to that, we were going through and doing it with our own people in the buildings. So then we decided to step it up and do that to the police and fire stations. And then today, um, I met the contract cleaner down there, and we uh, targeted the areas to be done, and it's going to include the entire frontline vehicles for the DPW. And that's also going to get put into the uh, weekly rotation. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, for both... Um, Police and fire and DPW, who are all the people sort of out in the field, so to speak. Um, do we, I mean, it sounds minor, but do we have things like sanitizer available for them in trucks so that when they're out and about, that's ready for them? Handling? Yeah, we actually um, have, um, when we saw this whole thing unfolding, we put some, uh, we're, we're, we were well, very well stocked at the beginning. And as you can imagine, we're going through a lot of this stuff right now, a lot of the disinfectant and the sanitizer and the wipes, as you can imagine, then they're nowhere to be found on shelves. So um, we added more dispensers at strategic locations. I'll talk about the schools first, um, bolted them right to the walls, added more, distributed what we had for wipes, and then went into doing a lot of touch surfaces. And then as things evolved, um, we put hand sanitizer on people's desks. Um, we actually went through the schools today and we, um, with the superintendent's permission, um, got a good supply of, of the wipes that are uh, being stored in our, in our shop here right now uh, for first responders and um, other departments that are in direct contact that might be in direct contact with the public. I also put an order in today for more rubber gloves um, and um, surgical masks, which are not the, not the N95s, but they do off, offer good protection, which I'm going to deliver over to uh, the uh, fire station tomorrow. So we're all working together to make sure everybody has what they need. Um, people shouldn't be shy to reach out to us because we're, we're, you know, we know the frontline responders are the ones that we need to really um, outfit correctly, if you will. Great. Thank you so much, Joe. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you all. 
other questions? Board, other other members uh, who, who joined us, really appreciate We, we have uh, 28 people uh, participating right now. Very much appreciate you all taking the time to, to do that. Are, are any comments from, from inside the group right now? Okay. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll move ahead on the agenda. The, the next topic relates to community response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments on this. You know, clearly, this is an area that's hitting all of us um, in different ways, but in many cases, very severely. We all have friends and loved ones that can't be with us here now due to safety needs and specifically to keep them and us safe. We also have neighbors who are more vulnerable, who need our support and also need us to stay away from them. Uh, we're all developing new rules for social interaction. The neighbor to neighbor networks that, that Bob mentioned um, are great. They're, they exist, they're forming, they're fantastic. They really are the heart and soul of Reading and is really uh, a tribute to what's going on here. I wanted to highlight a few things that uh, the Chiefs brought up, uh, Bob brought up, uh, Jane brought up as well, just to kind of bring everything into context for us all. You know, with the President of the United States extending his call for social di distancing, the Governor of Massachusetts calling for continued closure of non-essential businesses and advising people stay at home, the messages are all very clear. The governor has issued a stay-at-home advisory for individuals over the age of 70 and for those with underlying health conditions, with the exception of essential trips and exercise. The governor's order also advises staying at home for all those who aren't providing essential services except for necessities, again, including exercise. Individuals in the Commonwealth and the, in, in the town should always practice social distancing, which means keeping a distance of six feet between you and other people. We as Reading residents need to heed these orders to help to control the spread of the virus and very importantly, to protect our most vulnerable citizens. The board has been repeating uh, for the use of fields and other public areas and has been highlighted in some cases, the police have been responding to, to some of these calls. We really need to act as a community here. We need parents and children all to understand the severity of the problem, the importance of distancing and to stay at least six feet apart at all times. This means that parents need to make sure that children do not go out to play with friends unless they can maintain six feet of distance between them. It means adults also need to practice social distancing. This is our responsibility as a community. And as Bob and, and the chief highlighted, this is not where we want our public safety or public services personnel having to spend time or risk, risk exposure. As it relates to running businesses, the business community clearly is suffering severely from the coronavirus. Non-essential services are closed down per the order of the governor and the Board of Health. Establishments that remain open focus on food and pharmacy. These businesses clearly are open for the benefit of the public and they need your patronage in a safe way with social distancing of patrons being very important. A number of grocery stores and pharmacies have established senior only hours where senior is Bob defined as age 60 plus. Please contact each store about their special hours. Again, please contact the store about their special hours and be sure to utilize safe practices, including social distancing when going there. You're also encouraged to consolidate visits to grocery stores in particular, ideally only going once per week or 10 days as is possible. The select board, uh, so this is our first virtual meeting. I, I hope it's going well so far. I suspect the sound is, is probably uh, better than it oft times is. Um, we will be planning to meet virtually, regularly, and we'll try to remain, or, sorry, maintain a normal schedule of every two weeks. We should also be prepared. We may need to meet specially and on short notice as needed. As it relates to town meeting, the town moderator and town manager issued a note to town meeting members last week indicating priorities for the meeting focused on the budget and that given the governor's order for schools to remain closed through at least May 4th, town meeting will very likely be delayed. The select board is given authority to change the dates for town meeting and we'll be working with the town moderator, town manager, board of health and town council um, for dates with current thoughts looking to sometime in June. We'll be looking at state legislation and coronavirus updates and keeping in mind the health and welfare of our citizens and town meeting members as we consider new dates. We probably should include an update on this as an agenda item for our April 14th meeting. Uh, I'd like to pause here for a moment before going deeper into the agenda and give other board members the opportunity to make uh, comments that they'd like to. 
what I might suggest is um, if your folks just want to go or I can uh, kind of pick alphabetical order if that makes the most sense. But uh, why don't I open it to board members if they'd like to make comments. I'll go first, Mark, that's okay. Please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody. Thank ICTV. Uh, thank, for, thank Mark for putting this together. It was a lot of guidance from Bob and from Phil. But um, maybe Bob could answer this one or maybe Mark. What has been the response or input from uh, Senator Lewis, uh, Rep Haggerty, and uh, Rep Jones, if at all? Sure, I can, I can respond. Um, Senator Lewis has been on the phone with me or through his staff person, Emily, um, at least uh, three or four times a week. I spoke to him for about a half an hour this morning. We have a regular call scheduled. Um, Representative Jones, it, it depends on the legislation. Our, our representatives were more busy last week when a bill finally passed the House on Friday. That bill is now in front of the Senate, so I'm speaking to our senator more often. I would say they've all been extremely attentive, and I've never talked to them as often as I have in the last three weeks. They're really being very helpful. Um, a lot of the legislation being discussed is very important um, for a number of parts of the community and for us as an organization. Um, there, there does expect to be passage of a bill uh, possibly as soon as tomorrow by the Senate. They've been working with the House to reconcile some differences and then a signature by the government, governor sorry, on Friday. Um, that'll have a lot of municipal finance issues and election issues buttoned up. Um, finance is something that is not as important as life safety, but it's just around the corner for us all to think about in terms of the impact on the state's finances and the town's finances. So we've, we've got that uh, covered and we're working on that. So I'd say generally, Carlo, um, our three elected officials have done a terrific job and they work very collaboratively with the governor. I had something today uh, via Zoom um, this afternoon to update uh, residents in the district. Also, Bob, you mentioned uh, in your opening statements, and that we have an email from a resident about the boards and committees in town who obviously want to get back to work. And I know you said the state is working on it. Is it, is it a matter of days, or is there going to be any guidance on when our boards and committees in town can get uh, together via Zoom or just try to work on things that um, to move things forward so we don't get behind? Um, specifically for the land use boards, the legislation is expected on Friday to be signed, same, same legislation. Um, the issue is um, there's, there's a lot of uh, land use issues that if the town does not act by a certain deadline, then it's, it, things are approved by default which obviously is called constructive approval. So we, we certainly don't want the absence of boards meeting and the ability to have public hearings to mean that anyone can file for anything they want and get it. So that's one of the first things I asked the legislator to fix and they are, they are gonna fix it. It, is, it will happen this week. Um, public uh, services have worked on um, a policy statement for the land use boards. So as soon as that legislation is buttoned up, um, starting next week, the land use board should be all clear. Um, I have not received any requests or comments from other than a land use board so far. Okay. And I'd like to chime in on that also. I know that um, the school committee is, I believe, planning a meeting for next week. And um, one of the things that I guess uh, is happening here also is this is kind of a test for kind of a purely virtual uh, meeting taking place and, and hopefully we'll we'll learn and improve from these and those those can be opportunities going forward. One of the challenges we'll face is public hearings and trying to figure out the best way to have people participate in those. Um, there's discussion, we should have some discussion and, and uh, I know there's other discussion going on as well about how this is going to be handled to in all the communities across the state and even beyond that but that, that's a, a challenge we'll have to think about pretty soon. We, we're going to, we're scheduled to have a public hearing on the 14th uh, related to parking. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, and, and, and again, from a from an email from a, uh, a resident, um, shout out to everyone, but a specific shout out to Emmy Dove and all she has done um, during this crisis and um, to the whole Board of Health board and Board of Health staff, of course. I just want to mention that. We did receive some emails tonight. Vanessa did mention uh, some of them as well. Uh, Michelle will get some, uh, some more in the future. 
So please reach out to us with any questions or concerns. A lot of it's been covered tonight. And we'll probably have a few more comments from the board. Um, and that's it. And then to address the small business community, there, and Aaron made a good point that there's a lot of information out there, but there's a lot of restrictions and a lot of uh, requirements for these loans and um, things at the federal level don't match up with the state level. So please reach out um, and research what you can. The CARES Act was filed by the federal government um, and the state, our state of Massachusetts has not adopted that yet, but um, there's a lot of restrictions and requirements to uh, apply for a small business loan. I know the SBA uh, at the local level will be working with businesses um, the state uh, went through that first $10 million uh, pretty quickly. I know they're going to uh, provide another $10 million to be loaned out by the MGCC uh, through the state, so uh, Mass Growth Capital. So there's, there's a lot going on, and as, as, as this goes on, at least till May 4th, a lot of businesses are going to be devastated, um, and I'm hoping they can hang in there. But uh, rents are going to be due, utilities are going to be due, um, insurance is going to be due. Uh, there's so many things that have to be paid for uh, when you're open or closed. And if you're laying people off, um, from what I've read, that, that goes against um, uh, uh, getting approved for a loan. And there's a lot of stipulations. So please do your research. Please reach out um, to the authorities that are providing the loans or your local bank. Um, that are SBA approved lenders. I know there's plenty around. I'm pretty sure Eastern Bank is one, Danvers Bank is one. I'm not sure if Reading Co-op is or um, the Citizens Bank, but uh, the small business community, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the residents are doing great with the places that are open, uh, but takeout cannot sustain a full service restaurant. Takeout cannot sustain a breakfast lunch establishment. So um, we're just hoping that we can all get through this, but um, this has been stepping up, and uh, we just have to do our best and uh, hope for the best. Thanks, Carlo. Um, Aaron has chimed in, in the background and sent to to folks here. And what we'll do also is is post it in other places. Um, but that web page that I went to, uh, going to the town website, going to economic development, um, the letter uh, it's uh, called the. COVID-19 business support and resources letter. And that has a lot of, of at least the information on um, what requirements and how to apply, where to apply, things like that. So great, thank you all. Yes, thanks. Mark, if I might. Please. Um, every business is different, uh, but I just wanna make sure Carlo that everyone understands that um, if a business can meet the criteria uh, handed out by the SBA, the loans will be forgiven. So it's not just a loan that you have to pay back. If you can meet the conditions, and I'm not sure every business could, one of them being to maintain your payroll, um, then those loans will be forgiven in six months. You don't have to pay them back. So that's so the, the word loan is used, but just so it's clear, it's, it's much better terms than just a regular loan. I agree. I, I, I read somewhere where it's eight weeks. So again, I, I don't know where to get the exact correct information. Um, you, you just mentioned six months. I read today it was eight weeks. So I, I, I don't know where to, hopefully the site that Aaron, all the links that Aaron has posted um, are accurate, but um, six months would be great uh, if you can meet the requirements. But I, I, like I said, I read eight weeks. So um, hopefully we'll see what happens. Aaron, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? I can speak to that a little bit. So I do want to refer back to the letter and I will be updating this tomorrow regarding the CARES Act. Um, but there are a lot of different types of programs um, that are there with different requirements um, for each one of those programs and different deadlines and eligibility requirements. So if you are a business out there who uh, needs support and needs to speak to somebody about what program makes the best sense for you, um, there are professional resources um, through the SBA and through the SCORE program. And I will, again, um, post that information there for businesses who are looking for specific um, business advisors to help them through the process and prepare to take advantage of any of these um, programs and to get all the information that they need to really figure out what program fits best for their business needs. 
Thanks, Erin. Uh, other board members? Ann, I see you were chiming in. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this is Ann Landry. Um, I'm just hearkening back to Emmy's comment about the impact is often of what we see is about uh, reflects actions taken two weeks ago. Um, so to that and knowing that uh, the governor is predicting a surge in about two weeks time, it just um, reinforces the importance of what we are doing now um, will have an impact later on the capacity of our healthcare system to take care of our friends and neighbors and family uh, if they should need medical care. Uh, so I encourage everyone to follow very strictly the social distancing guidelines um, that we, that have, that our Board of Health, uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and um, the governor uh, have issued. Um, and to that end, I think it's, uh, apparent to me, and I think I suspect I, I speak for the rest of the board that town meeting will be delayed. Um, it would, it would not be safe or, um, uh, or intelligent for us to hold me a town meeting at the end of April, um, perhaps still at the height of the surge. Um, and for me, as in terms of when the timing will make sense for us, to meet again, um, I think it will be helpful to have um, better predictive modeling um, as to when that one that may be safe for a, a group to congregate. Um, and per I, in particular, would like to see what alternatives we might have in terms of uh, meeting virtually, uh, knowing that I would really like to do all we can to protect vulnerable members of our community. And certainly there are many town meeting members who have pre-existing con conditions. Uh, so I, I, I would really like us to do all we can uh, to um, schedule that, that next event. Thanks, Ann. Karen or Vanessa, would you like to add some comments? Thanks, Mark. Uh, all right, Vanessa, there you're up. Uh, there was a few more questions that came in from public comment. Would you like those now or would you like to wait? I think this is working well to bring them up now, so please. Okay, um, so there was one question regarding food bank donations of Jamie Stallone uh, and whether the food bank is accepting food donations or only gift cards at this time. Jamie had to chime off, um, but what I thought I heard her say is that the most useful things for them are gift cards. Okay. They um, are accepting food though too. Oh, great. Oh, sorry, Kelly, I'm, uh, Carrie's here, so please, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they are still accepting food. Uh, and they're able to leave that um, either at the soup, local supermarkets or at the food bank itself. There are bins outside Stop and Shop and Market Basket, I think right at the entrance of um, one by the liquor store and Stop and Shop. And then in Market Basket, I'm not sure where it is, um, but people can throw the food in there. Fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Uh, uh, someone asked regarding the frequency of our meetings and if we were willing to meet um, every week as opposed to every other week in order to provide updates. There is something to be said for this, especially for members of the community that don't have internet access and that's where the bulk of our information is currently available. So it might behoove us to have shorter meetings um, sort of if they're the in-between weeks that are strictly dedicated to the COVID-19 town response. What are other members feeling about that? I'm fine with that. I think it's a great, great idea. I'm also open to that. Karen? I would be supportive of something like that. Thank you. Okay, okay. great. So why don't we start planning it that way, that we'll uh, post ourselves weekly. Great. Um, thank you, Mark. And then um, there was the question that came in about the nurses, Bob. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at that email. It did come into the board. Did you receive it? Yeah, I just got word that um, we have a backup uh, nurse available tomorrow that's trained in Maven, so we should be good. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Um, and then the last comment that came in um, from the public that I saw was regarding having um, 
there are multiple members on Facebook who have been posting information and they ask that the board speak with a single voice as opposed to having individual members be providing um, COVID-19 related information. So I, again, just relaying what the public submitted to us. Well, it sounds like a great idea. And maybe what we can do is, is have, pick one person to take responsibility for uh, posting information as it's provided. Uh, and I see you're chiming in. Ah, I was, I was nodding along. Um, you know, it's interesting because we're all, <laughs> no, uh, we are all on, we may not all be on every social media site. Um, certainly, so, so, and different sites have different or different Facebook pages have different rules. Um, I, I like the idea in theory. Uh, I also don't necessarily want to muzzle anybody else's ability to speak. Um, I have been posting on Reading MA coronavirus support as well as my own personal page. I'm happy to continue doing that. Um, I have made clear that I'm doing so, you know, in my own capacity, not in an official capacity as a designee of the board, but uh, I'd ha be happy to, to take that on in, a, in an official way if, if folks would like me to do, to do that and to continue doing those things. It, this might be a good time, given the circumstances, and you and I had met as a subcommittee to talk about communications this past year. It mm -hmm. might be time to expedite a select board Facebook page. I don't know how the board feels about that. Largely what I've been posting is sharing what has, what different town, other town um, Facebook pages have shared. So I tend to share those, um, those posts in the Reading Mass coronavirus support page. And this is Karen, um, the town of Reading Facebook and not sure everyone is aware of the information that has been going up there. So I have shared a few items to the larger Reading Parents Network, um, one or two mm -hmm. items. And that mm -hmm. might be something that staff might be willing to do as we sort of build up awareness of both the coronavirus and the town of Reading Facebook pages. Carla, oh, Carla do you have a comment on no, I'm just, I think it's a good idea about how do we manage it and who's going to be the admin and, you know, stuff like that. I think it is a good idea. Uh, and I know the board has been working on a communications directive uh, before the election, and we should not stop that. Um, so I think Vanessa is onto something. It's just how do we manage it and who's in charge of it and do we have to agree on each post? And just things like that. Um, I think it would be a big deal, but just, you know, how do we manage it? So I know Vanessa, when Vanessa and I had previously met as a subcommittee, Vanessa had uh, had done all of the work re relative to a social media policy, and I had not done any of the, that work. Um, <laughs> I don't want to put too much work onto Vanessa, but if you wanted to come back to our next meeting, uh, with a proposal on the social media policy. Um, it wouldn't require us to meet again as a subcommittee uh, necessarily, although we could try to figure out some kind of virtual meeting before then if you wanted. But if you yourself just wanted to work on that piece and come back um, for our meeting next week, that might be one way to move forward. Sure. So I, I have the policy. Um, it needs to be tidied up a little bit more. It is lengthy. Um, but, Anne, it might be helpful if you and I, even if it's a brief Zoom meeting, um, sure. so that there's someone else I can bounce it off of based off of what, yeah. I mean, it's all pulled from what other towns do, but before we mm -hmm. um, add it to the bigger agenda. So why don't we coordinate with Bob to set a date for next available okay. based on posting? Sure. I'm happy to do that. Great. Great. Okay, why don't we move forward from there? Are, are there any other kind of comments inside the group on, on response at this point or should we move ahead into the rest of the agenda? Okay, seeing no comments, I think we should move forward. Um, is, the, is the board comfortable with how we're working with public input 
uh, right now. Uh, in other words, taking it kind of as it's coming, but we'll also leave time toward the end to address it as well. Is that working okay for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that. Um, all right, let's move ahead then to the scheduled votes that we have. Um, so let me, I'm gonna share the screen. Sorry, I'm navigating way too many things at the moment. So to give an overview, these are the, uh, the votes that, that we're gonna be taking this evening. Um, first up on the list, sorry, I just need to move the page. And sorry that this is so, so large. Um, first up on the voting is, is to uh, discuss declaring a state of emergency in the town of Reading. Um, as of 2 p.m. today, and I'm sorry I didn't, didn't catch what it said on the website there, if any further updates, there are 197 communities out of the 351 in the Commonwealth that have already declared a state of emergency, with Woburn being the latest of our neighbors to do so. Today, the Board of Health voted a state of emergency. That's the Reading Board of Health voted a state of emergency. And this is how many communities are handling this, with having both the Board of Health and the Select Board uh, work together and vote a state of emergency. The main impact of voting in favor of a state of emergency is that it can help emphasize the significance of the situation and it offers some clarity of action between the Board of Health and the Select Board, which is the chief elected board of the town. I believe it's very much in our interest to do that this evening and fully support the Board of Health in, in their declaration. Uh, are there uh, comments from other board members on that? No. I'm in agreement. I agree as well. Great. Uh, uh, so, Carlo, this, so is Carlo quite, this is quite. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Coming through. Can someone, maybe everybody mute themselves just for a moment and then we'll come back? No, oh, maybe it's me. I better make sure. <laughs> um, there's quite the document. Uh, or the, quite the uh, the piece here. Uh, can everybody see this declaration as it's laid out? This is wording that we got from town. Carlo, would it make sense? Do you want to, um, would it make sense to read through this one or should we uh, accept the whereas is as written as we can see them and then move to the therefore? I will. Ask the you know, if the board is okay with that. Um, I'm okay with that. We have a de declaration of emergency proposed um, for the board uh, to do a vote. So, so if the board is okay, can um, let's let's move forward. Can you start with the therefore section, which is like the second to last paragraph, and through the end, please? I got it. Okay. Therefore, the select board, pursuant to its authority under section 4.7.4.1 of the Massachusetts Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan, uh, dated January 2019, and any other applicable, applicable law, sorry about that, hereby declares a state of emergency to the town of Reading as a result of the threat of COVID-19 as a recognized as recognized by global, national, and the st and state health officials. And to continue, the town manager shall appoint an emergency management director, EMD. The EMD shall work with other local officials and representatives of state and national emergency personnel to direct all necessary or appropriate action, including but not limited to directing evacuations, opening shelters, mobilizing local resources, activating neutral aid agreements, requesting state and national assistance, and seeking appropriation of funds for all such actions. This declaration of a state of emergency is effective immediately and shall remain in effect, in effect until it is rescinded by the select board or the governor's declaration of emergency is rescinded, whichever comes first. Is there a second? Second. Bob, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for your, your comments on this one. Uh, no, you summed it up well, Mark. I have nothing to add. I do have a question. The emergency management director, is would that be Chief Burns, who's already been uh, appointed to head, the, to head command? I, I can't address that. Um, 
my predecessor, uh, Pete Heckenblecker, appointed Greg many, many years ago. Ray thought this was a belt and suspenders thing for the board to do it again, just in case when it was done 25 years ago that the rules of how the appointment was made have changed. Any other questions? No, we ready to take a vote then? No. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I neglected to show my uh, my operating slide at the beginning. I apologize, I stated most of the words, but I think what we should do is do roll call votes in all cases, just to make sure that if that's what the what will help this along, that we, we do that exactly. So uh, if that's all right, I'm, I'm gonna move ahead as I see your images on the screen. <laughs> so, Anne? Yes. Carlo? Yes. Karen? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. And Mark votes yes. So we're five zero. Okay. Sorry, I just got to bring my, my speaking points up here. Uh, next is a uh, specific Board of Health matters. Uh, the Reading Board of Health has issued an order to ban door-to-door -door solicitation and canvassing until further notice. The select board needs to vote on supporting this ban this evening. Uh, Bob, is there any other information you would want to add to this? Um, no, this was a request specifically of the police department um, for two reasons. One is to keep the solicitors away from the public, if you will, but also the solicitors would need to be fingerprinted and go into the police station, which virtually every police station has shut down that right now. Great. Any board questions or comments? No. Nope. Okay, seeing that, Carlo, can I ask you to, um, is it okay with the board if we spend the day? Whoops. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Would it be okay to Hello? Hi, is everyone on? Are you still able to hear me? Can I just see nods of heads? Yes. I lost you for a moment there. Uh, okay, sorry. What I was asking is that uh, would it be acceptable to the board accept those and move to the therefore in the reading of the motion? Yes. 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 Carlo, can I ask you yes. to pick it up from therefore? Well. Okay. Therefore, the select board and the board of health pursuant to the powers and authority provided to invested in them by the declaration of described above and all relevant state laws and lawful authority, including mass general law, C.111.104 uh, do hereby issue this emergency order. All door to door solicitation and canvassing in the town of Reading is hereby prohibited. The chief of police is directed to temporarily revoke all certificates of registration required for such soliciting and canvassing pursuant to general law 8.9.9.5 for good cause as described in this order. This emergency order is effective immediately and shall remain in effect until it is rescinded by the select board and the board of health or the governor's declaration of emergency. The, dec the governor's declaration of emergency is rescinded, whichever comes first. Is there a second? Second. Any other comments from the board? None appearing. Nope. Go through the roll call again, please. So Anne? Yes. Carlo? Yes. Karen? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. Mark, yes. So we're five zero. Sorry, I somehow didn't get the right size for the screen on that one. I'll try to go back up here. All right, sorry, let me just get my next document to come up here. Mark, I just want to say thank you to the Board of Health and the Select Board for taking care of that for us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Our pleasure. Okay. Uh, so next here is state legislative matters. Uh, the board has an opportunity to state its preference with respect to allowing a deferral on tax payments to assist those facing financial difficulties with the pandemic. The state legislature is expected to be voting in the coming days on providing a local option 
that would allow late payments on tax bills to June 1st, uh, as compared to May 1st here in Reading without penalty. Per town council, we can, a vote, we can take a vote tonight to allow these late payments uh, if this bill is in fact enacted into state law. And we can do this in advance of the legislature and governor signing the bill, which is anticipated uh, in a matter of, of a few days. Uh, Carlo, could you read the, the motion and then we'll, the board members can do a discussion and then we can move to a vote on that. This is number three on okay. the slides here. Yep, number three. Move that the town manager shall be delegated the authority that is expected to be conferred upon the select board by legislation adopted by the state legislature once signed into law by the governor to provide relief from the late charges for property tax water and sewer and stormwater utility fees consistent with the limitations set forth in that legislation as enacted. Is there a second? Oh, Karen, you got on mute. Second. Karen seconds. Bob, do you have comments on this? Yeah, I do, Mark. Please. Um, this is the same bill that's pending that uh, we hope is gonna be wrapped up on Friday. Uh, the language that I've seen uh, both from the House and the Senate is the same, so I have a pretty good suspicion it will uh, finish that way, is to allow for any property tax bill or any water, sewer, and in our case, stormwater fee that is due between April 1st and June 1st. And for Reading, um, our tax bills are due May 1st and our water, sewer, stormwater fees are due April 15th. So each would qualify uh, to be paid instead as late as June 1st without any penalty. Uh, and earlier, RMLD was discussing uh, their flexibility. We are very limited in our flexibility. This would certainly give the residents at least four to six weeks of a break. Town Hall would heartily endorse that. If, um, if it's a hardship beyond that period of time, we totally understand and we have payment plans that we can set up, uh, but I will caution people that we, our hands are tied as to what those payment plans can look like. There is state law that prescribes interest rates that we must charge on those. Um, so I, I would hardly night so that we can make sure we can tell the community as fast as possible, it could be as quickly as Friday if the governor signs the legislation, just so people at least know for six weeks, um, or in this case for two months really, uh, they don't have to pay the town as they sort things out. Thanks, Bob. Are there other board questions or comments? Seeing none, are we ready to go for a vote? Uh, I'll do the roll call again. Ann? Yes. Carlo? Oh. Yes. Okay. Karen? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. And Mark votes yes. We're 5 0. Thank you, everyone, on that one. Next is approval of the Public Employee Committee and Town Agreement for FY21 health insurance premiums. Uh, Bob, can you please provide board details on this? Um, certainly, do you wanna have the motion first? Uh, sure, yeah, I think that's what we really should be doing anyway. Carlo, can I ask you to, to uh, read the health insurance agreement motion, please? Okay, sure. Motion to approve the health insurance agreement and health insurance opt-out program side letter. Both both dated July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021 as presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Karen. Hey, Bob, please. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, the PEC is a group of 16 unions in the, the town, the school, and the light department uh, entities. It also has a 10% representation for retirees. Uh, typically, this group does not uh, finish negotiations on health insurance until May or even June. Um, this year, they realized the circumstances, um, you know, cause for quick action. I was really impressed that we got together and somehow we were able to do a Zoom meeting before I even knew what it was mm -hmm. and got unanimous approval from all the unions that could make it. Not every union could attend. There was about an 82 percent uh, attendance weighted by uh, those enrolled, so the schools are the largest. And the only changes, um, they were very good. The only changes they asked for are no cost or actually advantage to the town. 
Um, by adding retirees into the opt-out program, we could save money. Every time we pay an opt-out premium, um, the town saves, depending if it's single or family, uh, six to $12,000. Um, dental, to add those for retirees, the town doesn't pay anything for that. So it's not a cost to the town. And the reason that I wanted to meet quickly and bring this to you quickly is we got a really terrific uh, renewal rate of 2.23%. And the future of health insurance is certainly unknown at this point. So we wanted to lock this down as quickly as possible. This is our uh, third or fourth year of really, really good health insurance rates. Um, I really appreciate the unions working so closely with us. I have a question. Bob, I understand not that not all of the unions were represented on the Zoom call. Have they all, the, or particularly those who weren't represented on the Zoom call, have they voted on this? Um, they have not. They did not attend the meeting, so they do not vote. They're all aware of it. They were all okay. invited. Some of them just couldn't make it. Did you hear any comment, either favorable or unfavorable afterwards? Uh, no comment in either direction. I, I think the rate kind of speaks for itself, though, Anne. Okay, thank you. Other board comments? No, run appearing. Are we ready to take a vote on this? Return to our roll call. So, Anne? Yes. Carlo? Yes. Karen? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. And Mark votes yes. So we're 5 0 on this one as well. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Um, okay. Next uh, for the agenda um, is items not anticipated 48 hours before the meeting. Um, I would actually, well, first of all, let me thank everyone for. Uh, your patience and staying with us. And um, a lot of this we believe is the highest priority of the town right now is to make sure that we're able to continue to offer all these services. I want to once again, thank everyone who joined the call, um, the command staff, all the employees who are, are working to ensure our safety and, and uh, I can call it comfort in these times as well. So thank you for that. Um, within in the last 48 hours, there is a topic that I'd like to bring up. Um, and it is a we have some updates to discuss uh, here. Mark, I'd like to recuse myself at this time. Um, I will step away. Is Can someone please text my, me when this topic has ended? Yeah, so I'd like to ask you, you turn off, I guess, video and audio during this period. Um, Anne, could you please send Vanessa a text after this part of the discussion so that she can rejoin the rest of the meeting at that time? Yes, I can do that. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, for members of the board, members of the community, um, we've been working with town council uh, very closely over the last many days, but in particular the last few days, concerning the petition and a number of challenges that have been raised. Only yesterday did we come to a well-reasoned suggestion on the path forward, and I want to uh, be able to share that with everyone for, for comment here. Um, very specifically, we spoke to Ray about the issue of notification um, to Vanessa, and there, there seems to be a lot of discussion about this. And I want to read to you um, a note directly from Ray uh, to the town. Um, this is from Ray. Well, I'm confident that as a matter of law, the select board received the petition and the registrar's certificate once it was delivered to Bob's office, and that he had ample authority to provide notice thereof to Vanessa. I am aware that others have questioned my conclusions. Rather than continue this disagreement, I believe that there is a sensible resolution that will remove this issue from further debate. Therefore, I recommend that the select board acknowledge its receipt of the petition and certificate, at least by today, when individual select board members all received copies. Then the select board can vote to instruct Bob to send a new notice to Vanessa, which will restart the five-day period specified in section 8.11.3 of the charter. And Ray continues, none of this has any practical impact on what you do tonight, since it would be premature for the select board even to consider calling an election until the five day period has expired. And under any possible interpretation, that has not yet occurred. Signed by Ray Miaris, town council. So, just to kind of bring that together here, the full board this morning 
received official notification and a copy of the certification of signatures um, performed by the Board of Registrars, but received this from the town manager. Uh, this is the first formal notification to the, to the entire board. I'm going to ask that the board review the certificate and vote uh, on this tonight, as Ray had suggested. The vote would be to have Bob, as an agent of the select board, send official notification to Vanessa as, as soon as possible, you know, e.g. tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, once Vanessa receives this notification, the five-day period starts, which should culminate um, on April 14th. Uh, in advance of our scheduled meeting on the 14th. And as you'll see later in our agenda, there's a discussion uh, that I had put on there as a placeholder uh, for us to discuss that at, at, the, at the next meeting. Uh, there are some objections that have been raised to the Board of Registrars with the select board in copy. And the Board of Registrars is working through those issues now. Uh, let, me, let me take a pause. Is there any board question or, or discussion on this topic? Mark, could you could you um, do me a favor and just repeat what this would happen? Um, I we would acknowledge receipt of the certificate tonight as a select board. Exactly. And and what would happen between now and the next April fourteenth is our next scheduled meeting. So that currently is, although we just talked about having a meeting next week as well. So mm -hmm. once the 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 way the uh, the charter states is that the the board is supposed to get notification and then based on that move forward. And once Vanessa in this case receives this notice from the, the select board or an agent of the select board, she has five days to decide to either uh, potentially resign her position or to not resign her position. Until that five day clock is run, there can't be any discussion of uh, a recall election or other activities. That, that's the way it's written. And um, Mark, just to clarify, when you say the select board upon re receipt of the notification moves forward, you mean moves forward forthwith in notifying the town officer who is the subject of the recall petition, not moves forward to schedule a recall election. Yes, thank you. The move forward is to send a, a, this notification, which starts the five day period. Um, officially and clearly. And, and, and per Ray's note, um, under any interpretation, that could not have happened for this evening. Um, and what this is doing is is more akin to satisfying some potent, some objections that have been raised. Uh, other board comment or questions? Quick question. Um, does our tar charter, as a matter of... Um Normal business, specified business versus normal days. Is there any distinction? Is it, Are they just always assumed to be calendar days? So in, in this case, in the most liberal interpretation, uh, if it is sent out, let's say tomorrow, if it's received, let's say if it, if it were to be received on Saturday, we'd actually count five days that uh, town hall is, is open, which would take us to the 14th. It would be Monday otherwise, but it's, I believe, is it Patriots Day? I used to call it Marathon Day, but not this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the USPS has a little bit of a role here, um, but that that's the time frame that we'd be talking about here. Any other questions on this? And, and again, I, I apologize that this is in the last 48 hours, but it is in the last 48 hours. No, I think this is really important to um, be very precise and careful. And um, I, I, I thank the staff for already having having put the, much of this information on the website. And with this new information that you've received, then they can update it as well. Because I, I know that we're getting lots of emails from residents. And then we can direct them to a source of factual information on this topic. Good. Um, okay, if there are no other comments, are there no other comments? Okay, so Carlo, I think we need to create a motion on the fly here. <laughs> um, something akin to uh, moving that the board instruct the town manager to send to Vanessa Alvarado written notice of the recall petition and certificate. 
Does that, does that sound appropriate? I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, motion that the select board on April 1st um, notify Vanessa Alvarado per the charter uh, notice of the recall petition that was submitted to the town and certified by the board of registrars. Uh, so I think it was missing from April 1st. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. What? Is it, I would take, I would just take away April 1st because yeah. it can't be postmarked today. Oh, okay. And I'd also add, I didn't hear clearly, but it needs to say that it instructs the town manager to send written notice. Okay. Because we're, we're basically having the town manager act as our agent and the board is formally voting that. Gotcha. Motion for the board to instruct the town manager as the agent to move the recall petition forward that was submitted to the board today uh, with the signatures certified by the town clerk and the board of registrars to uh, formally recall Vanessa Alvarado. So does the, I'm wondering the, the, the kind of the move forward wording. Um, I'm wondering if we're better off just being very simple here. Okay. It, the required action really is instructing Bob to send that note. Okay. Um, I, I think I, I personally would prefer if we, if we make it just can we get the Can we get the language directly from the charter um, in terms of what is required to be sent to the town officer? Let's just get that language directly. Um, yes, I can then, pull that up, in fact. So I had it linked before, but I took it away. Sorry. I can make a suggestion. Please. Um, <clears throat> Vote to instruct the town manager to send a new notice to Vanessa Alvarado um, as specified in section 8.11.3 in the charter. What he said. <laughs> so 8.11.3. <laughs> I agree. I'm in agreement as well. Does that, does that work for others? Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Okay, so can you... Uh, you make that motion, Carlo, or, or refer to the motion that Bob just stated? Uh, refer to the motion that Town Manager Bob Alisher just stated. So, Ben, sorry. <laughs> okay, do I have a second? I would actually appreciate hearing it one more time. <laughs> okay, um, if we'd like, why don't I... Um, you want me to try, Mark? Yeah, I was going to ask if you can hang on one second. I can um, work on it live. Okay. Give me one second here. And then we can read it. Exactly. That's helpful. I always find this in town meeting too. I always find it challenging to vote on things that are read mm -hmm. out loud versus seen. I agree. Sorry. Uh, okay, Bob, please. And vote to instruct the town manager to send to send a new notice yeah. to Vanessa Alvarado. which will restart the five-day period specified in section 8.11.3 of the charter. So that's taken right off of what Mark read earlier from Ray. Great, yeah, that, I see that's coming right straight from Ray's suggestion, that's good. Okay, does that work for everybody? Um, hi, this is Karen. Um, you know, it seems a little overly complicated having a new notice and a restart, and and I think simpler is better. It, the charter says that the select board needs to be notified, and we are um, going to vote that we um, were notified this evening, and then we will be instructing the town manager to notify the subject of the recall petition. So I don't think we need to have that 
the new and the restart in there. Just so just cross out um, new and cross out re in front of start. Ian, what do you think of that? I'm okay with that. I, I think we could also, if we want to be very, you know, I think we've discussed this, but um, to send a notice to Vanessa Alvarado on April 2nd, 2020. Um, cons you could say consistent with section 8.11.3 of the town charter. That's good. Thank you. Carlo, before I do writing and crossing. Can we have the number five, also parentheses, the word five, or just change it to five? Uh, whoops, sorry. Is that acceptable, everybody? Um, do we want to say as agent of the select board or on behalf of the select board? That's a good idea. Yeah, I, th I agree with that. Good. Yes. Okay, it's actually just a quick question, Bob, should it actually be move as opposed to vote? Mm. Yes. When Carlo reads it, it should be yes. Uh... Okay, Carlo, can I ask you to please read that? Okay. Move to instruct the town manager on behalf of the select board to send a notice to Vanessa Alvarado on April 2nd, 2020, which will start the five day period consistent with section 8.11.3 of the town charter. And a second, please. Second. Thanks, Karen. Any other discussion on this? All righty. Anne, how do you vote on this one? Yeah. Karen? Yes. And Mark, yes. So we're four zero. Um, okay, and can I ask you to uh, ask Vanessa to rejoin? Yes. Mark, thank you for keeping us all together tonight. You haven't you haven't deleted anyone yet. This is awesome. <laughs> Getting an unhappy internet sign on my side. I apologize. Uh oh. You've done such a great job, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. If uh, if Verizon sticks with me, we'll uh, we'll get through to the end. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think that we really uh, need the the slides anyway. So let me say. So uh, are you folks seeing? You're seeing pictures of people. Okay. Great. We're back. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vanessa, I see you're back. Thanks. Uh, so uh, two things really remain on the agenda at this point. I think um, public comment and uh, the last thing in the agenda would be topics for, for our, uh, what I had as an April 14th meeting, but we'll come to, back to that in a moment. Um, in terms of how we handle the public comment, um, I think you know, we, we've done a, a pretty good job catching things as they come in. I've not been watching, but it, it, I believe that uh, other board members have, Caitlin, perhaps you have as well. Do we want to try to address other comments that have, have come in uh, basically since the packet was issued? What I'd suggest is if there are lots and lots, and, and you guys can tell me the answer to that, then we may have to kind of more summarize. But if there aren't that many, perhaps we can even read some of them. Um, we, we went over a lot of them already, Mark. Oh, great. Okay. Are there, there are others that have just come in in the last few minutes? Uh, I have one. I have one if that's okay. Please. And I, I know it was addressed earlier. Um, does Bob have someone picked out for the EMD position already? 
Bob, would you like to address? Um, sure. That, that was, again, belt and suspenders from town council. There is already someone assigned to the position. That won't change. It's the fire chief, Greg Burns. Thank you. Are there other comments that have come in that we should we should address here? I think we covered most. If anyone else has anything they want to say. Great, super. Um, why don't we move on then to uh, next meeting? So I think the first issue is if we want to have a meeting uh, next week and move on to a, a weekly posting. Um, I think we, five of us talked about that and said that is what we want to do, correct? Okay, great. So, um, so let's, let, Bobby, we can uh, ask you and Caitlin to get, get us posted on a weekly basis going forward for a while. That would be Yeah, great. if I could make a comment. Please. Um, the reason I asked the board to meet on a Wednesday is because the thing is moving so fast that to put together a packet on Thursday versus Monday is a huge difference. So if the board's okay, if the focus of your meetings are going to be the, the COVID-19 situation, I'd ask you again to meet on a Wednesday night so we can respond Monday with an agenda with as much information as we can. From my perspective, that's fine. I thought others. Good so idea. Wednesdays? <laughs> yep, great. Wednesday sounds great. Okay, so the posting will be Monday uh, afternoon for Wednesday. Correct. Wednesday the 8th. Great. Okay. And then uh, just be aware of the Patriots Day holiday. Yeah, that's for the week after that. We'll have to make sure to post your 14th meeting quickly. I'll okay. work with you on that, Mark. Great. Thanks, Bob. Um, so uh, are, these, are there topics that we want to make sure that, that we're addressing? So obviously the COVID-19 piece is, is the top um, of, the, of the activities here. Sorry, do I have it here? Right. Okay. So um, let me just come back for a second. On the 14th, I believe that's the date certain that we said we would uh, have a continuation of the public hearing on parking. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. We need to have it there. Um, I think we can talk about if there's going to be a way to accommodate that in terms of having a public hearing, um, if there's a, a, a good accessible path. I would suggest we do a couple of things. One is we can uh, talk to some other towns to see how they're handling the situation, to see if we already have some best practices that are out there that might be helpful to us. Um, I'd love to get more feedback from the community on how this worked. I'd love to get feedback from everyone who's on this call in terms of how they think that this worked as well. My impression is it seemed to work well. We got some public comment. If we're having a public hearing, that may not be the best approach to it. Um, so I think we may want to think about how to, how to get more, more engagement possible. What are, what are the other members' thoughts on that? Yeah, I think a lot of the public wants to, you know, on whatever is going on and, you know, whether it's thanking people or whether it's questions about what's been talked about tonight. I'm, I'm not, this is my first time on Zoom. Um, so it's been great. Mark, you've done a great job. Everyone's done a great job. Phil, Bob, everyone's done a great job. And I think, I know, Mark, we talked offline about a chat feature, um, you know, with messages and if that's a possibility, but as long as they identify themselves, you know, I'm open to suggestions. Um, I think being like this, and I'm very new at this myself. So I, I think what other towns have been doing, um, we should model that as best we can, but uh, what else can we do? Yeah, well, we may be leading here too, to some extent. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll see. The the one um, question I, I just give to the board also is that there is a a phenomenon that's taking place um, that is is called Zoom bombing. And what happens is when you put out a information on a Zoom call uh, broadly, um, you can sometimes get people who their interest is not in having a meeting take place. Their interest is in distraction and, and causing problems. And in my academic capacities, um, we've been restricted from allowing that to take place going forward um, in order to, to, to not have it happen. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm wide open to thinking about ways that we can do it. We certainly would ask people to identify themselves by name and address. Um, there, we can think about ways to do that. I'd be happy to, to stay involved with trying to figure out how we can do uh, more of an active, an active basis for that. Um, I think the, the one thing that we want to keep in mind also is that we have set aside in each of our meetings time for public comment. Um, and in addition to that, during the discussion of certain items, we can, we can allow for comment to come in also. And although I think email here may have been a little bit clunky, um, it may also have served a purpose. So we, it, I think we should think about other alternatives that can still allow for some kind of, uh, I'm going to call it security, so that we don't have this, uh, this Zoom bombing uh, problem in our background. Let me, let, me, let me stop. Other comments, please. For clarification, um, this is Karen Herrick. Was, is the Zoom bombing something that happens if you use the Zoom chat feature? Um, it's actually when you put out more publicly um, the address for the meeting. So any, you know, a lot of people can get it. Uh, it can be shared through social media in particular, and people who just happen to be cruising and looking to cause a problem pick it up and, and use it. Okay. Um, my other thought on using the email tonight, and, and I agree it was a little clunky. Um, the other thought is that people are sending in the emails and identifying themselves, but the people on the call and, and people listening in, we're not announcing who sent it in before we ask the question. So if we want to make it more as if a regular meeting were occurring, maybe we need to incorporate that in there. So they are identifying themselves and on when their question gets asked, we also identify the source. Very good. Other, other thoughts? The email system, I think, worked well. Um, we eliminate these bomb situation and um, we could streamline it and keep it as a designated place in the meeting so that it's not interspersed the way we did it tonight, but a dedicated section where, to Karen's point, we also identify who the person was. Right. And I think it actually is a very, um, it's a good control. I, I'm a little concerned that chat could be very distracting. Um, I was able to, I think, reasonably well manage things tonight in terms of chat box in the background. I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. If, if I might add, Mark, um, the, the board is faced with two different issues. Um, one is general public comment, and then the other is comment directed at an agenda item. Um, for comment directed at an agenda item such as this evening, I think the email feature with Karen's suggestions works okay. Um, I, I do agree with Karen that um, just as if they were at a meeting, they should identify themselves with, by name and address. Um, however, for general public comment, um, again, that's generally, if it's not on the agenda, it's not something the board will discuss. So I'm not sure what the advantage is in you reading out an email that you can't discuss. It'll, it'll be in your next packet. Um, the only difference would be that the person doesn't get to have, uh, you know, the issue described the same night. It's, it waits for a week. But just to remind the board, if it's not on your agenda, you're not really supposed to discuss it. Right. And that would hold true whether we were using email or chat, truthfully. That's right. right. Oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, there really isn't much of a best practice out there. There's one community, I think it was Middle Middleton, um, that did have a public hearing of less than 20 people. It was a very concentrated issue and it worked out fine. They used one of these technologies. I'm not sure if it was Zoom. Um, there's 20 or 25 of us that communicate regularly by email and no one else has had any experience with this, but all of, all of them are wondering how to do it. Um, some of the legislation, I, I mentioned the term land use boards, um, but also more specifically, it does deal with public hearings and how to conduct public hearings. So I'm not sure that there's going to be any kind of a loosening up, but it would be helpful for us to wait for that legislation. What if so by we next week we should know how to conduct yeah. a public hearing. Great. So why, why don't we postpone until next week? Um, because our public hearing isn't scheduled till the 14th anyway. Right. I think tonight in terms of incorporating public comment went, went 
pretty well and better than I had actually anticipated. Um, I'm sure we'll, we may hear from people afterwards uh, and then we can try to respond to that feedback. So why don't we ask people to, um, if they'd like to make suggestions, please send them in and we can have this as one of our agenda items for next Wednesday. Does that work? That's everybody? great. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, just thinking about what else we kind of had on, on the list. So the COVID-19 updates we talked about, the downtown parking hearing has to be on the 14th because that's when the date's certain that we set it for. Uh, so that meeting is going to have to be that Tuesday. Uh, it, recall election was on here. I, I don't see any value in having that on next week. So I think we push that to the 14th. Uh, ad hoc human rights uh, committee and update. Is there a preference on, on when to do that? Should we put that onto the 7th? Sorry, is it the 8th? Yes, 8th. 8th, oh. 8th versus the 14th. And do you have a, a, a preference on that? Um, I don't have a preference. Um, I do need to still do some outreach to the school committee and the library board to confirm who they might um, be interested in having serve um, on that ad hoc committee in this upcoming uh, year. So why don't I uh, be in touch with you about about how progress is going there? And if, if it makes sense to have it for next week, that's fine. I also think it's fine to have it on the 14th. Uh, so what I would suggest also is that uh, Bob and I can work together and, and, and look at some topics. I also very much take the point of if we're going to be meeting on a weekly basis, um, if we can have modest agendas uh, for each of those meetings and still accomplish everything that we need to, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Yes. So if there are other topics that board members would like to um, suggest, um, you can just send them in to, to uh I guess send them in to Bob directly is probably the best way to do that, unless there's a, there are other things you'd like to bring up tonight to, to get onto the next agenda. If, if I might ask, I know the board um, under normal times would have discussed liaison assignments. Oh, Once you. your board start meeting again, I think that's a good topic to cover. Thank you. Great idea. So, so why don't we do that? I think that it should be, it's a, uh, a discussion of how we want to do that and then um, ideally actually establishing them as well. So we've, what we have established so far, though, is that um, Anne is working closely with the Board of Health as the singular liaison. You're assigned to RMLD. Yes. Uh, I think that's all we set so far. And, and those were just based on time issues uh, from, from our last meeting. Is that right? Okay, so Bob, I think that's a great idea. Let's make sure that's on there. Any other topics that, that members would like to, to make sure we have on, on the, the next agenda? Can bring it up now you can send it across uh, please send it over to to, to, to bob um that's actually i can send it to me and bob is that right bob yeah yeah send it to me and to bob that would be great okay and is any other uh, comments or topics people uh, board members would like to bring up tonight we're good okay so let me just thank everyone for participation for making this you know work we're very open to getting feedback and comments on how we can improve this and make sure that we're uh, we're accomplishing what you want us to accomplish. We're getting the input that you want to get to us. Um, and with that, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, sorry, Carla, can I ask you to make the motion? Oh, sure. uh, motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. And you tried to second, great. Um, so we have to do roll call. Sorry, Ann. Yes. Carlo. Yes. Karen. Yes. Vanessa. Yes. Mark. Yes. Thank you all. We are adjourned. Thank have you. Good evening. Thanks, Mark. You did a great job.